Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow and friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Today, yep, we've got welcome, haven't we? Welcome to City, Mr. Jack Grealish. Yeah, I've had a, had a quick look at... Uh, I'm going to have a quick look at what bang we're going to get for our book. Eh? He's uh, cost quite a bit of money, this guy. So I'm going to have a look at his, his past and uh, I'm going to try and answer some key questions today that uh, are on the lips of all City fans, I'm sure. I mean, uh, has he come just for the money? I mean, obviously, I saw a piece from Ian Cheese. I mean, having a, a little bit of a, a comment on that. Obviously, it brought a lot of discussion. Is he a bit injury prone? Does he get some injuries? Is he a naughty boy? Is he a naughty boy on and off the pitch? Is he is he a bit of a cheat or is he just misunderstood uh, on the pitch? He's certainly been called uh, various things over over the years, and of course, uh, where's Pep gonna play him? And is he gonna play or is he gonna is he gonna warm the bench? But a few questions we'll we'll answer later as we go through these, and some of the some of the facts and stats will sort of lead us to answers anyway. So or or make us ponder and think. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not the oracle. I don't obviously I, I'm not. Uh, inquired with Pep and asked him uh, what assets he thinks he's going to bring to the club. He obviously thinks he's going to bring some to the club, and of course, he, of course, I'm, I'm sure he will. I mean, obviously, uh, he, is, he is a talented lad, isn't he? But uh, yes, let's have a quick look anyway. Let's get on with this. Yeah, Jack Peter Grealish, yeah, born 10th of September 1995. So, if my calculation is correct, as I'm recording this, he'll be 26 uh, next month uh, in 2021. Uh, he was born in Birmingham. And raised in nearby Solly, Solly. I'm not going. To, I'm not even going to try and do the accent. Solly, Solly uh, He joined Aston Villa, who he supposedly supported. But at the age of six, you probably would be supporting the team you start playing for at that sort of level, anyway, did not you? And he made his debut for the club in May 2014. A bit more of that in a second. Uh, he's he was eligible to represent either England or the Republic of Ireland because of his uh, sort of grand grandparents side uh, paternal or maternal whichever they call it and he was actually capped by the Republic of Ireland at uh, under 21 level before confirming his decision uh, to play for England yeah in April 2016 so he played for the under 21s for England as well for the uh, first time in May 2016 nothing nothing wrong with that at all nothing wrong with that I mean uh, obviously if you if you Irish you might have something to say about it but I think that's fair enough to keep your options open and then you've got a good chance of a future then fair enough but like, let's face it it would possibly be first name on the team sheet, team sheet for Ireland all the time wouldn't he but obviously he's not guaranteed that for England he made his senior your debut uh, as far as England are concerned in the 76 minute substitute in a nil nil draw against Denmark on the 8th of September 2020 so literally less than 12 months ago as I'm recording this and he made his Villa debut yeah he's not his full debut but he came on on the 7th of May 2014 at the Etihad yes he came on as an 88th minute substitute in a 4 nil defeat for, for Aston Villa and that will sort of put us uh, put us in line to get our title didn't it and that was the the penultimate game of the season if you like so it gave us that little matter of just uh, making sure we sort of won that last game to, to get the title that season I don't remember being impressed with him. I mean, I was there that night, uh, or whatever. Yeah, it was a night. It was a night game. Uh, I probably thought, who's this scruffy bugger coming on? But uh, there you go. It doesn't it doesn't stand in my mind. But he's only on the pitch uh, two minutes plus injury time. So there you go. So interesting that he did make his actual first time on the pitch for the first team was against us. He did have to wait till the seventh of April, twenty fifteen, to make his full appear first full appearance for Villa. And he actually that season he helped Villa get to the FA Cup final. Yeah, I forgot about that when I was looking through this. And uh, although. They did unfortunately lose 4 0 to Arsenal in the final. Uh, it did sort of, I think, an assist or two on the way in the semi final. 
Uh, he earned himself a very unwelcome all-time record in 2016 when actually Villa were relegated. Yeah, he played uh, 16 matches and they were all defeats that season, <laughs> um, breaking a record for the worst uh, season by a player to get relegated. I think it was 11 before then. Some guy had played 11, uh, 11 defeats in the 11 games. But uh, yeah, so not a great record for him. Let's hope he can bring get, get a few stats and records uh, to improve in that over the next few years. Uh, looking at the fouling, yeah, he was fouled 167 times. That was across the 2019-20 season. Uh, I'm not too sure what happened with the 2021 season. Uh, and that was the most fouls, or that was what's significant about it, is that was the most fouls uh, won by a player in, in a single Premier League campaign. I'm not sure how many he got last season, but it certainly wouldn't have been as many as that. At the club's end of season's award, uh, Villa's uh, Grealish was voted the Aston Villa Player of the Season by both the supporters and his fellow players. Uh, I think they've asked for that one back, actually, uh, based on what I've seen on Twitter. But uh, he also finished the season as the club's leading goal scorer with eight goals in the Premier League and ten in all competitions. So, not great, but, uh, you know, obviously it's a dif different level, isn't it, if you think about it. No offence, Aston Villa, but it, but it is. Uh, on the 15th of September 2020, uh, Grealish, so again, less than a year ago, Grealish signed a new five-year contract, but obviously you know, there's an, a, a sort of get-out clause, wasn't there? I think, I think Cheeky's uh, sort of mastered that and got that out, but... Uh, yeah, so he was actually signed back on my villa until 2025, so that's pro probably why I've had to pay the big bucks, and that's all there is to it. Right, what about his naughty boy image off the pitch? Well, yeah, in 2015, uh, the Sun, obviously obviously that paragon of virtue and, and truth, uh, published images showing him allegedly inhaling nitrous oxide for recreational purposes. That was 2015. He's only young lad. I mean, what's that? Six, six years ago? So it's, he's only 19, 20, wasn't he? Uh, November 2015, he had to train with the under-21s after going clubbing instead of returning to Birmingham after a game at Everton. So he went clubbing in the northwest. I'm not sure where he went. He might come over to Manchester. I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, he had to train with under-21s for a while. So, uh, obviously pay a fine as well no doubt September 2016 he was in hot water again for being at a party that was uh, shut down by the police so I mean alright might have been unfortunate but obviously what sort of party was it to get shut down by the police in October 20, uh, 2016 yeah, he was suspended for three matches after accepting a charge of violent conduct following a stamp on Connor Cody of Wolverhampton Wanderers perhaps he uh, he said <laughs> he asked him about the party and what was going on I'm not too sure not great not his fault the next one though uh, on 10th of March 20. 2019, so he behaved himself for a couple of years. Uh, Grealish was assaulted by a pitch invader during the derby match of, away at Birmingham City at St Andrews. Uh, after the, after this transfer, it's more likely he'd be congratulated and uh, get assaulted by Villa fans. But hey, there you go. But uh, yeah, it's not his fault that one was. He might have golded him. I don't know. But just, I mean, he golds me just by looking at him with his socks. To be honest with you. But hey, there you go. That's another story. Uh, into the COVID lockdown. Yeah, it was revealed that Grealish had violated government guidance to stay home. He accepted that his actions were wrong and entirely unnecessary and was fined by the club uh, yeah just looks like we'll have to keep him and Kyle Walker apart perhaps uh, <laughs> when, when he comes keep him at a safe distance uh, Grealish was reportedly banned from driving for nine months in the UK and fined £82,499 after pleading guilty to two counts of careless driving in March and October 2020 so not that long ago uh, uh, one, one in which he was filmed at Clyde with several parked cars doing a turn in the road so no doubt uh, he's probably had a few anti so not great I mean that's fairly recent isn't it October 2020 yeah let's go on off that for a little while so uh, look at the praise yeah a former Villa Academy director likened his player st playing style so that of Nottingham Forest legend John Robertson great Robertson a great player yeah if you remember him of, of a certain age younger ones might not do it but a great player uh, citing his ability to just ghost past people uh, Aston Villa teammate Emil um, Emilia Emiliano Martinez if that's how you pronounce it described Grealish as the most talented player he had ever seen 
Keane expressed surprise he not played more for more games for England. Well, we're all surprised by that. Martinez went on to say he never gives the ball away. When I see Grealish running, it's always a shot on target or a corner for us. He will drive past two or three players. Martinez also drew comparisons uh, of Grealish uh, to his own Argentinian teammate Lionel Messi. Well, he might be playing alongside him, mind you, but uh, I very much doubt it. But hey, you never know. Uh, the critique, yeah, what little critiques have we got? Uh, former Liverpool defender Steve Nicol. Yeah, he was all right in his day. Probably not so much now. Uh, Jack Grealish throws himself on the ground 50 times a game. I was actually looking at the clock today. The first time he went down was just under a minute on the clock. The next one was three minutes. It's most embarrassing. He threw himself on the ground where the dugouts were. Just embarrassing. He's a brilliant player. He really spoils it. I do echo a little bit of that, to be honest with you. Uh, former West Brom defender Matt Upson says, has criticised him. He said, saying we could see it here and we are a fair distance away. Jack Grealish waited for the contact and literally just dived on the floor. I can see Grealish having a cheeky little chuckle to himself and happy with the free kick he has just won. Yeah, so he does wind up a few people. Uh, he's often been booked for diving, he has been booked for diving, not not multitudes of times, but he's actually had second yellow cards have been sent off as well uh, for diving, So although his disciplinary record is, is fairly good, it's not, not that bad fortunately. I mean his little quirks, we know about one of his, a couple of his little quirks don't we, he does wear child sized shin pads uh, apparently in order to maintain uh, and control the ball effectively, but obviously his socks problem is he wears his football socks rolled down due to, this is superstition apparently when he plays as a young lad and I'm in success when this happens so uh, it has led to referees warning him to to pull him up and of course us City fans have now got a new little nickname for him anyway haven't we we've got uh, we've had certain TITS out Jackie haven't we now we've got calves out Jackie so there you go we'll a bit more on that in a moment as well but uh, Ginger Wigs has got some little offerings if you fancy it just a bit of fun yeah, so we call him Calves Out Jackie now. We'll have to think of an, uh, think of a song uh, that includes that, won't we? That'll be great. Yeah, the other thing, injury prone. Yeah, I was having a look at his injury record. An interesting one, that. I mean, in 2015-16 season, you saw, I mean, he's only a young lad. He missed 12 matches with, uh, well, one was tonsillitis, which is fair enough. But he, an he had ankle and Achilles problems. In, uh, he had a bit of a, a bit of a break then, but 17-18 season, I don't, uh, uh, he actually uh, missed... 15 matches, 15 actual Villa matches with kidney problems. 18-19, uh, he missed 16 matches, yeah. Uh, one for something, but he missed 15 for a shin bone injury. There you go, shin pads, shin pads. Where's some bigger shin pads, mate? It might help, a shin bone injury. We'll be back, we'll, we'll be back to that in a moment. So that was 18, 19, 16 matches. 19, 20 wasn't too bad. He only missed three matches because of calf injury. But 2021 20, again, a bit of a chunk, yeah, 12 matches. Yeah, that bloody shin bone again. He had, a, <laughs> he had problems with his shin bone. Uh, well, well, again, we'll talk about that in a second, but those bloody shin pads need sorted out, mate, don't they? Um, it may be something totally not connected to the shin, the shin pads, but uh, seems a bit... I mean, I'm putting two and two together and making five. I'm not too sure. His playing stats, yeah, he's made 252 appearances for Villa. Obviously, that include, includes championship games as well. Uh, scored 37 goals. In the Premier League, he's scored 15 goals in 96 games and 16 assists. So, if you add them together, 31 out of 96. So, just under a third as far as goals and assists are concerned. I mean, you think that, and compare that to KDB, for instance, uh, obviously. He's played 180, so almost double. But he scored 42 goals, almost three times as many. And 78 assists, that's, that's nearly five times more. All right, he's not KDB, but I mean, that just puts that into comparison. So if you think about it, uh, obviously uh, K KDB is actually uh, about uh, a third a third for uh, Grealish and over two thirds for KDB of uh, goals and assists per game. So, yeah, an interesting stat. I mean, 34% uh, of his shots are on target. So, again, only one in three. Is that good or bad? I don't think that's too bad, I suppose, but not not fantastic. He averages about four crosses a game, if you take all. Obviously, it's a very wide sort of 
thing to look at but about four crosses again and at least only one of those crosses will actually find a, a player so I'll find a Villa player in the past obviously so one in four average for uh, actually hitting hitting a player on his crosses again not fantastic uh, obviously some uh, I'd be interested to see with with some some other people's like Mares won't it? I should have done that but it doesn't look, look, look great does it uh, it doesn't particularly take penalties or free kicks he's not he's not a free kick uh, taker or a penalty taker and could do with a penalty taker couldn't we so yeah they're the very basic stats i'm going to great detail but that gives you an idea it gives you an idea doesn't it uh, conclusion let me let's just start to see if we answered any of these questions uh i will start by saying i'm i'm not a particular fan of Mr. Grealish, I've never been a particular fan of Mr. Grealish. I think he does cheat. He does. He does earn free kicks, which is fair enough. That's part of the game, but it's not how I like football to be played. To be honest with you, but hey, that is what it is. It's uh, he's now a City player, and he will get my support, and that's all there is to it. And I will hope he does tremendous things. So I'm going to say that before I carry on. Off the pitch, of course, as we can see, he's had his problems. Uh, let's face it, we've got one or two City players. I say we I jokingly mentioned Mr. Kyle Walker before, don't we? But uh, you know, it, there's some sort of truth in that as well. You know, obviously, uh, we know our management doesn't like it. Pep won't like Kenny messing about. Uh, he's 26 now. As I said, he did have problems, obviously, back in October 2020, not so long ago, with the, with his obviously his driving problems, but. Uh, uh, let's just hope he's grown up and matured and obviously the bright lights of Manchester, no offence Birmingham, but I think the, you know, the bright lights of Manchester are just a little bit more tempting perhaps than Birmingham, but uh, I have spent many months and lived in Birmingham, well sort of lived in Birmingham for a while, so I'm more or less sort of know a little bit and not too much but yeah obviously he's got that hasn't he, so it'd be interesting to see how he progresses and if he starts behaving off the pitch, I mean on the pitch Yes, as I said, I do think he wins free kicks far too easily. And it's borderline between playing the game and cheating. My personal opinion, that's how I feel about it. Uh, but no doubt if you can get three kicks in and around the box, it is useful, as I said. But I don't want to see my City players diving. I don't care who they are. I hate it when, when my, uh, uh, any of my players do that sort of thing. But uh, obviously he's not, he's got, he's not, he's not going to suddenly change overnight, is he? Let's be honest about it. Uh, and obviously... Will the referee give as much allowance as well? This is it. He's playing for City now. Perhaps he got a little bit more because he played for Villa. We know our conspiracy theorists about referees, etc. But, uh, you know, and obviously VAR in the box and stuff like that. I mean, you know, will he get it at City? This is the other thing. I don't, I don't perhaps what he perhaps won't get as much uh, leeway at City. Perhaps he'll end up in the book a lot more because the referees won't give him as much, uh, much rope as far as playing for City as opposed to Aston Villa. Probably, you know, there's nothing. I don't think I'm too far out with that, to be honest with you. Uh, his injury problems, yeah, not significant, but he does he does sort of miss a bit of the season, doesn't he? But I mean, again, uh, perhaps that's hand. It's like KDB, isn't it? And you know, you need perhaps that to give him a rest anyway. At some stage, it's not ideal to give him a rest through injury, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's not going to improve with age, is it? I mean, this shin bone thing, it's happened twice now, hasn't it? And he has missed a big chunk of games because of it. But uh, these things aren't going to improve with age. If anything, they get worse, don't they? So uh, I think I'll probably. He's not. He's put it this way. He's not. He's not going to be one of those guys who never gets injured, and it doesn't ever seem to happen these days. Anyway, certainly not with City players. But uh, yeah, it is a a little bit of a problem. I won't say it's too much. That shin bone weakness is a nuisance. But of course, as I said, it, wearing bigger pads would that help? I have no idea. I'm sure the medical team at Villa have tried these things, and obviously at Villa, perhaps Jack refused. I don't know. He's, he was a bigger fish, wasn't he? Let's be honest about it. Uh, again, no offense to Villa, but Jack was a bigger fish, and he's going to be. At our club, so uh, it'd be interesting to see how it goes. But as I say, it is it is his style, and perhaps the shin bone thing has nothing to do with the size size of your shin pads. As I said, I'm just being uh, logical in thinking it might be, but hey, there you go. But uh, I'm sure City will work out the best thing for him and the best thing for Jack, and he'll work out himself what the best thing for his. I don't think he's going to be the automatic first. I mean, for the player that's cost this money, you would think he's going to be the first player on the team sheet. And I don't think he is in the same way that Phil Foden, even though we'd love him to be, isn't. Uh, we've paid a lot of money for a squad player, if that's all he is. But he's a very, very good squad player, of course. He's obviously an asset to the squad uh, with lots of skill and little tricks as well, which is nice to see. But time will tell on this one whether what Pep will... Obviously, Pep can improve. We know Pep improves players, so we will see a different, might see a different side 
side of him. Obviously, he's got to change his style a little bit to, to please Pep, especially the tracking back, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, if Pep wants it, Pep's the thrill by it, then all oh, that's then who are we to argue with Pep if he's quite happy with having him? I mean, there's little doubt. We've already seen, haven't we, in the friendlies, friendlies this season that uh, Cancelo and Mares are linking up really well on the right-hand side. Uh, Grealish could do a similar thing on the left, whether it's with Foden, whether it's with Jesus, uh, etc., etc. So, yeah, I think that looks good. I say we've got we've got two attacking options. Same way that Sane used to link up really well. Perhaps it gives us that. Um, perhaps you're yeah, not the pace particularly, but certainly certainly the threat of the link ups on the left hand side as well as the right hand side because he's very obviously very one footed, isn't he, Grealish as well, which. It's not. It's no, no problem with that. I mean, if you you know, David Silva was one one footy once, but it did, didn't make it much difference. Uh, Grealish, if you if you look at money, the money side of it, and what Ian Cheeseman was having a bit of whinge about uh, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago when that this was still being discussed, uh, he was actually offered more to stay at his boyhood club uh, Villa. Uh, so. Uh, Ian Cheeseman is doubting whether it's just coming for money and I don't think that's a big thing as I said I, I always doubted City would break any records to pay wages for whether it's Grealish or Harry Kane to be honest with you uh, and I think yeah I think it's a genuine wish to win trophies uh, and there's not too much wrong with that is it he's given, he's given almost 20 years to Villa don't forget he was there at 6 years old uh, and although a lot of their fans seem to now fill out with him some are saying well you know congratulating him saying good luck for the future but a lot of, a lot aren't unfortunately but right minded minded fans surely would not begrudge him trying trying to better himself and I, i'm sorry aston villa if you're not happy but coming to manchester city at this point in history is is bettering himself and that's all there is to it um although the media and many as i said many opposing fans of every team not just villa uh, will never see it like that when someone joins city but that's 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 how it is that's just you can't you, it's like talking to a brick wall trying to trying to convince these people of anything um yeah the figures not confirmed but firm but i'm fairly sure it's going to be a city record transfer fee personally it's far too much for me but as you say it's not my money so I'll let them get on with it uh, and of course it'll boil some pee on the way so that's not too bad is it i say at the end of the day I say it's far too much for me i don't i don't particularly think but uh, he's english uh, he's very talented but uh, and he has a release clause of a certain amount of money so we've had to, we've had to pay the money haven't we it's sim simple as that and it's not my money, but I suppose it could be in a way. I pay to go and watch my team in a way, don't I? So I'm sure we all wish him luck and give him our support. Uh, I do hope he behaves. I do hope he steers well clear of Mr Walker, uh, puts on some man-sized shin pads, pulls his socks up, and of course helps our team win even more trophies over the coming years. But let me know what you think. Anyway. I hope I've answered a couple of questions and put a little thoughts in your mind and give us give you a bit of information there about Mr Grealish. Before we finish, as I said, I did, did mention Ginger Wigs. And so some uh, coasters are up on screen there that uh, I'm sure there's going to be lots more memorabilia to come uh, for Mr Grealish over the next few months. And I, I know the ladies seem to like him, don't they? I mean, it's not my type, but, you know, obviously... Uh, uh, yeah, since the girls like him, it's just all right, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that the ginger wig will have some more stuff out, so you can get those ca those calves out, Jackie Coasters already. Um, but perhaps there'll be no uh, tiny shin pads or tiny socks uh, for sale, stuff like that. But uh, you never know, you know, there might be a market, but there's always a market for something, isn't there? Anyway, thanks for joining me for this little little look, a little bit, little, uh, yeah, both serious and, and light look at uh, Mr. Jack. Grealish and, and uh, let's let's hope he, he he does great things for our wonderful club and uh, we're happy to see him. Anyway, thanks for watching. What well, you gonna do the rest of the day? Have a great one. Catch yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. To so we'll meet here again on the Citizen Channel, or perhaps you have a look. Have a look at my film and TV channel. If you have a little rest from football, that's uh, you know you what a rest from that. I do info and and try and entertain on there as well. Have a look at that. I only ask one thing off your blues. Please stay safe. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.